This is the way that uh, TESS actually looks at the sky with its four, with its four cameras. Uh, there are four fields of view that are basically stacked one next to the other uh, to provide a swath of sky that's 96 degrees uh, high in depth and, and high in, in, in height and 24 degrees wide. So altogether, TESS is able to uh, observe about 2,300 square degrees simultaneously. So that's about 20 times what the Kepler... So the, these are the uh, various kinds of uh, telescopes and in the map. Um, so we have telescopes all over the world that are going to be confirming these planets around the clock uh, in real time just because there will be tens of thousands of signals and only a few thousand of those would actually correspond to true exoplanets. And I'd like to note that not only scientists will be following up these planets, uh, but also amateur astronomers can use their own smaller telescopes to help uh, confirm which planets are true and which are not. This is a real image that was uh, made in, uh, in January on a very cold night uh, from uh, a rooftop at MIT uh, using an engineering model of one of the test cameras. TESS forms a kind of a bridge between what we've learned about exoplanets to date and where we're headed in the future. And so everybody's heard about all the great uh, discoveries that have been made by the Kepler Space Telescope. And so that you think about Kepler, it only stared at one small portion of the sky. And they've found thousands of exoplanets orbiting outside of our solar system, but many of them too distant and too dim to do any follow-up observations. So the goal with our mission is now to do a full sky survey. Let's look all over the sky. And let's specifically look for candidates where there are planets orbiting stars that are closer to Earth, maybe only dozens of light years away to hundreds of light years away, and ones that are bright enough so that the light from those stars coming through the atmosphere of an exoplanet could be studied by something like the James Webb Telescope. And so that's a really big part of our mission is to enable future exploration by providing a giant data set all over the sky of where these exoplanets are, the ones that are closest to Earth and brightest for follow-up observations, with the hope that someday in the next decades we'll be able to identify the potential for life to exist outside the solar system. Uh, once we come off the top of the rocket, all the fun for us spacecraft folks begin. About 44 minutes after uh, launch, we'll separate from the launch vehicle, deploy our solar arrays and be nice and happy and power positive. Uh, we'll then check out the functions of the spacecraft over about five-day period, turn on the instrument about six to eight days, get uh, first light about eight days uh, after we're launched. Then we'll do a series of propulsive maneuvers and fly by the moon, which will be a tremendously exciting day on uh, May 16th, eventually getting into this very special orbit, this P over 2 lunar resonant orbit uh, on about June 12th. So really looking forward to the exciting part where we'll operate the spacecraft from our Dulles, Virginia Mission Operations Center and continuing on into very many years or decades.
of a two-minute mark in flight. We're about 30 seconds away from Miko. One second later, the first stage will separate. Seconds away from Miko. Miko. And we have confirmation. Stage confirmed. Confirmed. And stage confirmation is confirmed. And stage confirmation is confirmed. You're looking at a live shot of the second stage single stage. That's a hard call, Ed. And the second stage Merlin engine has ignited. Follow the second stage. Standing by for fairing jettison. It has protected Tess on its way through the atmosphere. Just seconds away from jettison. Fairing preparation confirmed. And visual confirmation as well of the fairing separation. minutes remaining in this burn of the Falcon 9 second stage. Prepare to pull it. We have an admission elapsed time of three minutes. Both stages are in the outball trajectory. You'll hear calls about the first stage making its way back to the Yonasana Strong Ship. While the second stage of Falcon 9 continues to carry tests onward towards space. Ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, 
stage one engine burn shut down. And confirmation that the stage one entry burn is shut down. Not a minute, 15 seconds left. The second stage burn until it's complete. Stage one AFTS has saved. In the Launch Vehicle Data Center, on Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. And the first stage is just gone transonic. Thirty seconds away from the second stage engine. Stage one landing burn has started. And our stage two is in terminal guidance. Operators proceed to 11.100 on recovery one net. 